guys welcome back to my channel Simone here so today I'm going to be doing the third part of my seven part end of year videos that kind of made sense um so this is going to be my two star reads of 2017 I have nine of them so let's get started so the first book that I gave two stars to was The Touchstone by Edith Wharton which I kind of have forgotten all about really it was a bit rubbish um, it basically is about, as far as I remember, a man who has spurned the advances of some a famous author and um, is quite happy about that. And then she dies and leaves these letters that they wrote between the two of them, or back and forward I think. And um, it's obviously about him, but he's the only one that knows that. And so it's about the reaction of the community and about him I think. And again, it just, I read um, House of Mirth by Edith Wharton last year and really, really liked it. So I thought I'd probably like this. It is a short story, so I, I don't have a good track record with short stories. I tend to not like them very much. But to be honest with you, this one was just very forgettable and I gave it a two star. The next book I gave two stars was I Call Myself a Feminist, The View from 25 Women Under 30. Um, I think it was edited by Victoria Pepe? Beep? Pepe? 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 Her. Um, again this is short story so that might explain why I didn't like it but basically this is what it says it is the view um, from 25 women under 30 about themselves being a feminist and their kind of stories um, it was interesting it's about women from all different backgrounds so different races different experiences um, all different things and it's about their upbringing and their re relationship with the word feminist and it was interesting to begin with and then it got very repetitive every story I felt like was basically the same thing and I understand it's all about empowerment and feminism but I just didn't like it it was a bit boring for me and I was very excited because I'd seen um, a lot of people talking about it and saying how great it was but it wasn't for me and I think maybe I need to read a book by somebody rather than lots of little short stories because I got a bit bored the next book I gave two stars was According to Yes by Dawn French. Now, I have mentioned in the past how much I love Dawn French. I think she's an amazing author. I've read through four of her books altogether now. One of them was her autobiography, Dear Fatty, which I really enjoyed. Um, I also read A Tiny Bit Marvelous and Dear Sylvia, both of which I really enjoyed. I gave a four star and a five star, I think, too. But this one was just really not for me. Um, I think she missed the mark on this one. This basically follows a middle mid 30s maybe woman who was just split up with her boyfriend in England and so she moves to New York to the upper east side and basically is going to be a nanny for these two young boys and the family is very dysfunctional and she is also quite dysfunctional and I can't really say too much without giving spoilers but let's just say she has a very inappropriate relationship with many members of the family and then the conclusion is the most outrageous most ridiculous thing and it just would never have happened and it just irritated me and uh and then they never give the answer at the end which is one of my least favorite things in books i hate it when they leave it ambiguous because i need an answer don't give me a book without giving me an answer otherwise i'm not going to make it up myself that's not the whole point of reading a book so yeah it wasn't for me Next up we have Viral by Helen Fitzgerald, another one I was excited about. I, w I watched, um, I think I heard about this on Lauren and the Books channel. Um, I can't actually remember if she liked it or not. I just remember hearing about it and thinking that the synopsis sounded really interesting. And it's basically about a woman who, well a young girl I guess, her name is, oh I think her name's Sue? So it basically follows this girl named Sue who goes to Magaluf with her adopted sister. I want to say um, and basically they don't really get on very well and Sue ends up doing something um, well Sue ends up performing a sex act on multiple men in the middle of a dance floor and it gets filmed and then it goes viral across the world and then she runs away to basically get away from her parents and from anyone who's seen it because she's just really embarrassed there's also a kind of underlying story of her trying to find her like biological parents I think I can't quite remember to be honest like I said this was a long time when did I read this I read it in September and clearly I can't remember it and it wasn't that long ago so it didn't really stick with me um all I know is this was just very awkward and very strange and it seemed very odd that this girl who was like the be like the most behaved suddenly took drugs and then 
basically just performed a sex act on these people. It was just very odd and I didn't believe it. So yeah, I didn't like this one. The next one I read in November and that was Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. And this one, um, the reason I didn't like this very much, basically this follows, um, it's an Icelandic novel and it follows a, what it's like, I think it's based on a true story and it follows the last woman who was publicly executed for murder. And she was accused of murdering her lover with these other two people. I can't quite remember. All I know is that she basically um, lives or had to, was made to live with this family until her execution day. And obviously the family's not very happy about that. She's not very happy about the fact that she's about to be killed. And it's about that. It's very, very bleak, very, very depressing, I would say. Um, and to be honest with you, because it's difficult, for me to read the book and get really into it and get into the characters because the names were so awkward and the language was really strange. Um, obviously it's Icelandic, but there was a lot of Icelandic words in there that I just didn't know what they meant. And so it really pulled me out of the story, I thought. So yeah, I didn't like this one. Then the next one I'm really sad about, um, it's Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Now I think Gillian Flynn has probably been one of my favorite authors this year. I love Gone Girl, I love Dark Places. They are both amazing reads. And then I read this one. This was actually the last one of those of, of her books I read this year. And I really didn't like it. And I've heard people say it's their favorite and I don't really understand why. So it follows a girl who is living away from her hometown and she doesn't really talk to her family very much and then she is assigned by her boss who basically she's a journalist and she's assigned by her boss to investigate these disappearances of these young girls um or deaths of young girls sure I should I say um in this town where she grew up so she's got to go back and see her family and her younger sister who is basically the devil incarnate and this just the ending of this was awful i hated the mystery i didn't like it i just thought it was the most ridiculous ending ever and i didn't like it so it's a two star from me the next book i read really early on this year and this was actually in february and it is cheryl by sean smith now cheryl tweedy slash fernandez vecini slash cole i don't know i think it's tweedy now um but she is one of my favorite people I think she's really amazing, very talented and just a lovely person. And I have read her, the um, Girls Aloud, All That Glitters autobiography, uh, the, yeah, the autobiography that they all did. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I thought it'd be interesting to see specifically Cheryl and her kind of upbringing and everything. Now, when I read this, I didn't really think about the fact that this is an unauthorised biography. So it's not from her, it's not her kind of signing off on it, I guess. This was from Sean Smith, who I didn't think did a very good job. I think he basically went round her hometown and found people that had the most ridiculous connections to her. Like, he interviewed a woman whose daughter had gone to Cheryl's, like, ballet class when she was four. And I was like, that's not really telling very much about her. And it was like these really ridiculous connections that just didn't make any sense to me. I mean, I think there was a lot of information in there that was probably true, but most of that I already knew because it was kind of public record already, or it's already out there. So I don't think that he really brought much new, like more to the table. Um, and um, yeah, it was like little things, which I'm like, how is that even relevant and why do I care? So yeah, I didn't like this one and gave it two star. So the penultimate book that I gave two stars was The Madman's Daughter by Megan Shepherd. Now, my boyfriend actually bought this for me for my birthday, maybe two, maybe three years ago. I can't actually remember. It was a while ago. And I read this at the beginning of the year. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was the first book I read this year. And I didn't like it. <laughs> um, now, this is not my boyfriend's fault because I did ask for this book. But I still didn't like it. <laughs> um, this basically follows a young girl who believes that her father is dead and then finds out one day that actually he's not he's just he left because he was experimenting on animals and he ran away to this island so nobody could find him and yeah she decides to go to the island to find him and all of these kind of hybrid monkey humans and like creatures that have been like experimented on have like all come together and I didn't like it. And then the last book that I gave a two star was a childhood favourite of mine and I have no idea why I liked it. None whatsoever. This is Skellig by David Almond. Almond. 
however you say his name. Um, and, oh, I didn't like it. Oh, I'm not doing very well here, am I? It's just so, luckily the next few videos will be books I did like, but this is, you know, the ones I didn't. Um, basically, this follows a young boy whose family move into a new house when their mo his mother has a um, premature baby and they're kind of back and forth to the hospital and then in the house, in the garage, um, the young boy finds Skellig, who is a man slash angel slash monster slash whatever he is. Anyway, he takes food to him and looks after him and then there's some connection between Skellig and the newborn baby. And this, again, I didn't think there was a storyline to this. Like, I got to the end and was kind of like, nothing actually just happened. I don't quite understand it. But anyway, I didn't like this and I'm, I've kind of shot myself in the foot because this was literally one of my favourite books as a child and I hated it. So, there you go. So that is my nine books that I gave a two star to in 2017. I hope that you like this video. There will be many more to come, I assure you. The next ones will be much longer though, so get ready for that. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I shall see you in my next one. Bye guys.